Okay, Mortal Souls. He is from Australia, but he does not believe he lives under the planet. All right, he says, once saved, always saved, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, is a false gospel. We cannot deny that salvation is past, is a past and present tense event, but scripture also speaks of it as a future tense event that is in context with scripture. In John's Gospel, Christ tells the apostles at the Last Supper to remain in his love. He adds that if we keep his commandments, we will remain in his love. But he who does not remain in his love is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. John chapter 15, verse 6. So let's take a look at that. John 15, verse 6. All right. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So, no. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast, cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So there's no mention of, well, you could lose your salvation. It's not there, buddy. If salvation were a done deal, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again the last day. My Father which is greater than all, and my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Once saved, always saved. And, I mean, we could, we could do this all day. If you're not saved, you're not going to see it. And that's the bottom line. Whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. Once saved, always saved. Right, so, I mean, the bottom line is, <clears throat> immortal souls. Are you, how can you even call yourself immortal souls if you don't believe you're immortal? If, if you could go from being immortal to mortal, then you're not immortal. Jesus told his disciples to remain in his love because just as we enter freely into a relationship with Christ, we are free to leave him. Scripture is overflowing with examples of this. In Romans 11:12, Paul says, Note then the kindness and the severity of God, severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you and provided you continue, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. In Galatians 5.4, Paul says, You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. This verse implies that they were united with Christ and in grace before they fell. <clears throat> um, Galatians 5.4 uh, I think 
sometimes I wonder if people are making stuff up, but then, you know, there's got to be a reason why these guys say what they say. So, in Galatians 5, 4, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. <clears throat> okay, so there's no mention here of being saved and then losing your salvation. Uh, it is nonsensical because whosoever of you are justified by the law, so what do you do? Sin? You can't say, well, they sinned, and therefore they fell from grace, and that, so therefore they went from being saved to unsaved, which is illogical, by the way. You're not saved if you could be unsaved. You're not truly saved. It's illogical. Regardless, whoever of you are justified by the law, so they believe they're justified by the law. That would imply that they don't sin. But then you're saying that, well, they did sin, and then therefore they fell from grace. Does not make any sense. So, it's very simple. This is very simple, basic stuff here. These people are the kind of people that think they gotta be sinless. They gotta do it themselves to be saved. They do not believe that Jesus did enough to save them, they have to do something more than what Jesus did. And that's why they think they're justified by the law and they're not justified by the law at all. Okay, so what what is he talking about severed? Where does that come from? Because I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that at all. You are severed from Christ. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. <laughs> it, I mean, it's as clear as, clear as all can be, but where is this severed? What's he say? You are severed from Christ. That's is that. It's a, it looks like a quote. What's he talking about here? Let's do this. Is this in the Catholic version? Let's see. <clears throat> ye are. Is it ye are severed or you are? You are severed. Look at that. Ye are severed right there. What is that? The... Look at that. Wow. There's several corrupt versions. Look at that. Twelve times. A complete Jewish bold butter. Okay. ESV. There we go. ESV UK. Right there. So that's, that's your problem. You're reading corrupt Bibles that teach a false gospel. That's what I've been trying to say, is that these corrupt Bible versions teach false gospels. They teach false doctrines, and they teach a different gospel, a one that will not save anybody. NASB, you have been severed from Christ. That's not in the Bible at all. That would nullify the entire Bible and make it a corrupt and crooked book. Um, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Because no man, no flesh is justified by the law. Alright. So, uh, again, that's, thanks for bringing that up mortal souls because one <clears throat> it shows that um, um, you know these verses that you shared these are examples of everlasting life excuse me <clears throat> and they're examples of um, once saved always saved All right? and they're 
these verses are meant to help us, not to harm us. And the idea that you could lose your salvation if you if you screw up, you're going to lose your salvation. That that's it's wicked, pure wickedness. Um, because what you're doing is you're not trusting in God; you're trusting in yourself. If you're afraid you step out of line, you're going to lose your salvation. You're not putting your trust in God. Uh, you're putting your trust in your own self. And that's the difference between the saved and the unsaved. Do you trust treat Jesus Christ, who has begun a good work in you? Because when you are born of the Spirit of God, you have God in you. You have the Spirit of God in you. You are in God, and God is in you. Right, and now, you either trust God or you don't. All right, so if you if you don't if you're not born of God you're not going to understand any of this but then you go uh, thanks again I want to say for Galatians 5 4 because that's another example that I've been trying to show people that you got to stick with the King James Bible which is the pure word of God in the English language all these other modern perversions they their Bibles are corrupt they have contradictions, errors, and omissions. They teach a false gospel, and they teach false doctrines. They're, they belong in the garbage can. All right, so anyway, that's enough. Thanks. Good to hear from you, buddy.